Welcome to the With Clarity and Purpose podcast with your host, Janet Borrego. Each week, I bring you an inspiring person or message to empower you to live life on your terms so you can be who you want to be, do what you are meant to do, and have the life you deserve to have. We will provide you with practical and cutting-edge approaches to continue getting clarity and direction on your path, mastering your mindset, and gaining confidence to tap into your inner wisdom so you can live on purpose. If you're seeking to boost your clarity in any decision you have been wanting to make or any situation that you're going through and you keep asking yourself, is this the right decision for me? Is this the right approach for me? Even is this the right path for me? I want you to go right now to my show notes because I have prepared a free and simple three questions framework for you to go through that by answering these questions, I promise you'll feel a lot more clear and you'll start creating fulfilling outcomes out of the decisions you're making. Just go right now or you can go to ybcoaching.com slash clarity. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to another episode of With Clarity on Purpose. And I am so excited today because I have a super special guest. Sarah Ashley Baker. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist, certified yoga instructor and coach, and she specializes in mindfulness-based therapy and building a deeper connection to the mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. I love Sarah so much. We have, we met each other through my personal development journey, through our personal development journey, because we are always going through it (laughs) and I feel something that we are very similar at is that we are nerds when it comes to learning we always want to be investing in ourselves so we can show up for our clients she's someone I've admired deeply since I met her and I am just so grateful and honored to be interviewing you today my friend how are you doing (laughs) I'm doing so well thank you for having me this is so Um, much fun so excited. I'm so excited because something that I love about you and your practice, one, you're a therapist and you're a coach, okay? Mm-hmm. And I just love that because there is so much wisdom within yourself. And one of the things that I would love to explore is this difference between therapy and coaching and when to know how to know when to go to each one of these modalities are equally powerful. Right. But first things first, who is Sarah? What's your background? Where were you born? How did you gain clarity on this beautiful career that you have created for yourself? Yeah, I love that. Thank you. So I was born in Los Angeles and I didn't live there long as a kid. We moved to Palm Springs out in the desert pretty, pretty quickly. So I grew up in this very like desert, earthy energy, small town, and it's gotten a lot bigger since just recent developments. But that's where where I grew up with this like amazing mountain behind me and this beautiful desert energy. So always felt really grounded kind of being here and taking that energy with me in the world in terms of my career and how I found it, I always had this natural ability to to just connect with people or build rapport with them or just be able to hold space when they were going through really challenging things. I remember my parents always telling me, like, you just have this natural ability to to talk to people or make them feel comfortable or just to to guide them in certain ways. So I always intuitively knew that that was a part of me. And like with some of my friendships in high school, like they would go through really challenging things or experience some loss. And I just had this this way of being able to to hold space and help people get to this this new place within themselves just by being there. 
So I always knew that was part of my path. I was always really interested in psychology. I went to UCLA and at first wanted to be a communication major. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do journalism. And it was super impacted. And I just found this calling to move towards psychology. And once I was in it, I was like, oh, I love this. I want to, I want to take it deeper. I want to know more about the mind. I want to know more about humans and why they are the way they are and why my friends are the way they are, why my family is the way they is, why I am the way I am. And so I, I pursued that a bit more. And after college, graduating with my bachelor's in psychology, I went on to, to work at a couple of different places that gave me more understanding of where I wanted to take that journey. So I went from working at the Betty Ford Center. I worked at some runaway shelters for teens. And what I really learned when I was there is that I want to be able to take people deeper. I want to be able to actually help them and give them some tools and resources that go a little bit beyond just sharing about the story. So I did my I did my master's. I went through the whole experience of becoming licensed as a therapist, which is quite a journey. It's it's going through the master's and then it's getting in California 3000 hours of supervised wow. clinical experience. So you know, doing all of these hours, seeing clients, working with a supervisor and just really, really perfecting the craft in your own unique way. So after getting licensed, I went on, I worked at a crisis walk-in center for a long time where it was really intensive and a lot of really acute psychological things going on. And from there, moving into working with another group practice. And what I found was that, you know, I really loved being in the environment of these teams. And I also knew that I had this ability to lead and, you know, create a business of my own. So I did. And I started to, I created my own first, well, first I created my private practice, which I would see quite a lot, quite a lot of clients. I would see like there was one point where I was seeing like 28 clients a week, 30 clients a week. And wow, I got to this so really, really full, full caseload. And I was loving it. That was like my big goal at the time to have it. And then I recognized that, you know, I, I can't keep going like this. This is going to be a lot. And we were still getting a lot of referrals and a lot of things coming in. So I decided to move that into more of a therapy business and have other amazing therapists come onto the team. And it was really important for me that all of these therapists had somewhat of a holistic background too. Along with my therapy journey, I've always been really involved in, in yoga and been teaching yoga for a really long time and really involved in mindfulness and breath work and different types of spirituality and also transforming through travel. So all of these things were, were really big parts of who I was personally that I also wanted to bring into the therapy room. And as I started my group practice, I wanted the other practitioners to also bring in some of this magic and bring in some of their special holistic qualities that could help clients transform in, in new ways, right? And maybe ways that they hadn't been introduced to in the past. So I started to build the team. I found some amazing therapists and now I have a team of about 10 therapists. We're still growing and they're all unique. They're all special and they all have this holistic background. I love being in this leader leadership position and being able to mentor them and help them really kind of perfect their craft in the therapy world while also now pursuing my experience as a coach. And, you know, that journey was really interesting how that happened as well. So I can go oh into my that. God. So <laughs> exciting. I have like every time you were talking, I'm like, I need to ask her this. I need to ask her that. I have so <laughs> many questions. Yeah. Let's start when, I mean, you were a kid. It's so interesting that your parents were like, they also recognize it in this innate ability that you have of just like understanding people and showing interest towards your emotions are like, is there between your parents are they into energy work I know you're super spiritual like how are they compared how you were raised compared to who you are I'm just curious mm -hmm. yeah super interesting question so I would definitely say my my dad has definitely always been into more spiritual things or kind of had his own perspective or always turned back to spirit when answering question my mom was always very like open to these things. She always encouraged travel and discovering myself in new ways. And, you know, told me not to have kids or get married till I was 40 so that I could experience so much of life. And I think that played a big role in allowing me to have this freedom to explore and experience different things and with the foundation of spirituality. And I think one of the biggest keys, like in my family foundation was my great grandmother, 
who she she was really interesting because she grew up in a time where the she was a really big part of the Catholic Church. And so she had a lot of connections to that. And she was also really curious about the metaphysical world. And so while she was really involved in that, she was also studying people like Carlos Castaneda. She was really interested in hypnosis. Like she was really interested again in in metaphysics. And I remember as a kid, she would have people travel from all over all over the world to do readings with her. Wow. And they were her kind of her own special reading. She would kind of use the tarot a little bit and then she would have her own intuitive way of doing things. And I just remember people flocking to her. And as a kid, she would read my cards as well. And I don't remember what she said at the time, but I remember feeling really connected to what she was saying. And this was a big part of my development. And as you know, when we're really young in those ages and all of this is going on, it kind of seeps into your unconscious and becomes part of who you are. So I definitely feel growing up in that energy and her being very spiritual and very grounded at the same time and having this connection to an ethereal world shaped me in some ways and also gave me permission to explore it. And I remember recently, like later in life, kind of going to my parents and being like, wait a minute, you know, like what was Nana studying? Who was she into? Like what was she, what was going on with her? Because I feel like I'm on a really similar path and it's like influenced me in a big way. And I didn't even know that, you know, we were necessarily on the same path or studying the same things until we we dove more into it, me and my parents. So that is so beautiful. And Sarah and I have studied similar things like neurolinguistic programming, energy. And we believe that not all knowledge is in the same school. So I love how your grandma at that moment, she was studying different things. But when we chunk up, when we look at the bigger picture, we are all talking about the same things. It doesn't matter what religion, what mm -hmm. spiritual practice we are talking about. And I just, love that you brought the example of the tarot cards because I have a memory of my childhood. I was in Cuba and my grandmother and my mom, they would always go to like a card reader and they would take me with them. And it was just part of me mm -hmm. growing up, just experiencing all of those things. So I love that mm -hmm. we have that in common. It's a beautiful practice. And I mean, yeah. We believe in everything, really. So <laughs> to be honest with the audience, right? That's beautiful, Sarah. So when you this when you graduated from being a therapist, mm -hmm. what motivated you to work for yourself versus working for someone else, mm -hmm. to have your own practice, your own business? Yeah, I always I've always had this really creative sense about me and again this ability to lead and I really just wanted to create something that was so authentic and unique to me and that had all of the elements of what has helped shape me in the biggest way, what's helped me grow in my personal development and my spirituality and all of these different realms. So it was important to me to to create something new. Because a lot of the, you know, therapy practices that are out there right now, there's, you know, starting to be a lot more connection to mindfulness and spiritual things, which is amazing. And it, it, it hasn't been the necessarily the norm or like the biggest thing connected to therapy. So I wanted to kind of create this niche or this ability for other practitioners to come in who had similar values or connections to other spiritual things or holistic modalities and really have all of that in one place for our clients to be able to, to experience. So that was really important to me in starting my own practice. I wasn't finding it anywhere else. And I just love being an entrepreneur. I love leading. I love creating things. So I, I think it was always just a part of my blood to, to create my own thing. Definitely. I love that. I have never thought about it. But now that I think I've had like two experiences with therapy. And now that I think back, it is true. I haven't seen that spiritual or energetic, that holistic approach to therapy. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it sounds like you identified a gap in the system in terms of the <laughs> therapy world and you are actually taking the action to fill that gap. So I think that's that's amazing that you did that. Yeah. Now, you graduated, you established your business practice and then you created a team. I mean, from graduating to your business, to your own private practice, to creating a team. I mean, I feel that's such a, a big difference. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the main 
mindset component for you to be able to go through that, to build a successful team with a holistic approach? Because it seems like you were doing a lot of new things at the same time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think for me, again, like that deeper level why that I had around wanting to help clients, whether they were, you know, seeking these holistic practices or they'd never experienced them before and they were just open to experiencing them, that deeper level why of bringing these therapists together with similar values and similar modalities and being unique in their own ways was so important to me. So knowing that I had, you know, a lot of experience in leadership that I was, you know, a clinical supervisor and running teams before I felt this really natural ability to lead and manage a team and grow a team and to be able to do it in a way that was so important and purposeful and powerful to me. Like there was just no stopping me. And I think like once I got the ball rolling and I, you know, had gotten the experience from some of the other practices I was a part of, I was like, I, I can do this. And it takes a certain will and a certain totally. energy to, to create a business, whether, you know, you're a solopreneur or you're running teams, whatever it is, you have to be, you know, just really focused and, you know, really ready to, to take on whatever is thrown your way. So I was just ready. I knew it was what I was meant to do. I knew that once I had reached my goal of seeing, you know, 30 plus clients in my own private practice, I got there and I was like, all right, great. I accomplished this. And, you know, there's something more for me too. So continuing to grow and continuing to bring in, you know, just amazing therapists together in community and, you know, to the community really kept my ability to, to keep growing and to keep building and to, you know, manage the ups and downs of having a business and to learn from everything and get the feedback that I needed to make the business more successful and to allow it to thrive. It was, you know, just something that I, I just think it was innate for me, you know, That's beautiful. Um, something that you mentioned that I think it's so important is having that bigger why or that vision of yourself, which for you was very clear. Mm -hmm. And I always remind my clients and the audience, clarity in your direction is way more important than speed because you can go fast and end up nowhere. But it seemed like your long-term direction was freaking clear for you no matter what which is your why and I think that's such an important element that sometimes we don't invest enough time in creating you know the person mm -hmm. who you want to be and the things you want to be doing long term not only short term mm -hmm. of course that is yeah. amazing creating a team being a supervisor in this field what have you learned about people I mean, what have you learned about people and people development through all these years of leadership in the industry? Mm, so much. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I much. feel like that's such a, an expensive <laughs> topic, but just the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is being really open to, to grow, being really open-minded and being somewhat flexible, like being connected to your values and your deeper level why, and just being open to whatever's being presented to you along the path. And as I'm able to do that, you know, I meet some amazing people who have, you know, really contributed so much to the field and, you know, to our community. And then there's, you know, sometimes people who have a different energy or who are, you know, maybe just not the best fit for the team. So I really just learned to have patience and also to really be able to to communicate my needs and my values in a specific way that's going to help me build a team that's really congruent with what these deeper level purposes and these bigger goals and these bigger whys. And I think what I, I've found, you know, in regards to people in general, which has been so interesting is you know, everyone is so different. Everyone is so different and no one is, you know, absolutely right or wrong in the way that they do things. And, you know, as we know from NLP and, and this personal growth, like everyone has different models of the world. So being able to have some behavioral flexibility and how I manage a team using all of the skills that I've learned from personal development and applying that to how I communicate how I run the team, how I build rapport with them, how I, again, communicate boundaries and values and needs and uh, this ability to also listen to them and their needs and their boundaries and be able to create this cohesive, congruent, down-to-earth environment that, you know, the right people can really thrive in. 
I and the people that. who like maybe aren't a good fit, it's not because they're, you know, not a good person or anything like that. Like we just have different energy. So I think what I've really, you know, learned the most is just to accept people for who they are and to accept, you know, the, the people who are coming through and meant to stay long-term and the people who are, you know, just meant to come and, and teach me a lesson for a little while. That is so true, Sarah. I love that you said that, right? Because as you know, I went from being in my corporate career to full-time entrepreneurship last year. And something, a message that this year has been showing up for me in my romantic relationship, in my business, like everywhere, is just to let go of the attachment to the outcome. One, just accept what is and what's meant to be and just surrender without resistance, just knowing that what happens is meant to happen. And the other one is surrender this control that sometimes we have for people to respond the way we respond for people to act the way we are right Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I think everything you said is so applicable for anyone in any context of life so it's such a beautiful gift and what I've found also with my clients and my business is that as you know people are our biggest spiritual teachers like Mm -hmm. a lot of times they will bring up challenges or they will trigger things on us that we need to work on before Mm -hmm. facing that challenge or facing that issue Uh, like we say in NLP and in HUNA uh, perception is projection right Mm -hmm. many times they bring things that we need to work through ourselves and for the audience to understand sometimes when clients are not doing their homework I need to start asking myself where am I not taking action right Mm -hmm. it's just this Mm self-empowerment of looking inside and realizing that the outside energy matches your inside energy too so it's just such a beautiful process Mm -hmm working with people, you know? So that's, yeah. that's amazing. I love that because that's some, one of the biggest things that I tune into when things feel out of harmony in my external world. It's yeah. it's exactly what you said. Like I need to go internal and look at, okay, like where are things out of harmony inside of me? Because everything that I'm experiencing outside of me is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of me. Yeah. Like, I was just sure. having this conversation with a client before we started this call, the same <laughs> thing of like, she was feeling really chaotic in our world and really stressed. I'm like, okay, well, we have to go inwards, you know, like what's out of harmony? Where are you? Where are your thoughts? Where's your mind? Where's your emotion? Like what's going on in this internal world and yeah. how can we start there and work on that first? Cause that's going to help you shift that external world sometimes without you even needing to do anything in your external world. Yeah. Sometimes it's an understanding inside and then everything starts shifting mm-hmm. on the outside Mm -hmm. I find this, as you know, I'm an immigrant to this country and your grandmother, I know she was like half Mexican and half Italian. Mm -hmm. And I find also, you know, when immigrants come to this country or even if you're a minority, right, many people may feel that we are at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And I was having this conversation with a client the other day and I was telling her, what is outside of you, you cannot control. Mm -hmm. But truly believe within yourself that you're at a disadvantage you start showing up like that mm-hmm. which is I mean it's one of the mm-hmm. it's a hard truth to understand but what we are saying here is that you gotta manage this internal state mm-hmm. because even if the disadvantage or no it's true on the outside you gotta show up empowered and give your best it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what the context is mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it's just such a beautiful lesson that I remind of myself like all the time to be honest. So mm-hmm. thank you so mm-hmm. much for bringing that up. I mean, just with the understanding of yeah. that, I feel you can create and manifest a life you're meant to live just with that concept. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what you said around like, you know, whether you've had some disadvantages in your external circumstances or you've dealt with bigger things or you've had more challenges or obstacles in your life, you know, it's all about the mindset and your perception around these. How do you allow those things to impact you? What's your story around them? You know, what's your belief around them? And recognizing that in, in any situation, and I know we talk about this, it's like in a in a bad economy, are there still people who are making money, right? In a bad economy, are there people losing? 
losing money. Sure. And what's the difference, exactly. right? What's the difference? It's that mindset. It's that energy. It's the behavior, the values, the actions, and really that, that deeper level belief in yourself to create the change that you want to change or have what you want to have. Totally. And you can see it in the positive light. Hey, being in this country, being an immigrant, I mean, your superpower is resilience, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because you show up every time with without knowing the language. So I totally agree with what you say. It depends on the lens that you look at the reality. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so exciting. See, we get excited about these kind of things. <laughs> That's the kind of nerve. excited part. about obstacles and challenges. And <laughs> I mean, have you read the book from Ryan Holiday, uh, The Obstacle is Away? I don't think I've read that. No. It's really good. It's short. He's like a super a stoic author. So he's mm-hmm. all about stoicism. I think he published a book recently about discipline. Um, I don't remember the title, but he's mm-hmm. a really amazing author. I think you would identify with him because he's, into everything that we are talking yeah. about. Awesome. So, okay, so you have your therapy business, you're a leader in the industry, you have a team of 10 therapies, and mm-hmm. also you're a coach. Mm-hmm. What drove this interest in you also, like being a coach since mm-hmm. you were in therapies already? Like, tell me about it. Yeah. So it started when I, I had already, was already building the foundation of my team. And I had been working with clients for a long time, again, bringing in these holistic modalities and and we would see some good results and they would feel better for some time. And then I recognized that they were cycling around through some of the same stories or patterns or problems over and over again, or clients of mine who had really severe panic disorder and PTSD. And again, like the holistic modalities, they would, they would bring some relief and these clients would feel better. But I was also seeking something that was going to take it even deeper. I was asking myself, like, what am I missing? Like, what's really going to help these clients fully uproot these energies, these problems, so they can live the life that they're meant to live? And it was right around that time where NLP fell into my lap. And a friend of mine was like, oh, you need to go to this training. You know, you're going to love it. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to give it a chance. And as soon as I got there, I was so connected to the energy, especially as a therapist and definitely as a human of just being able to learn these new ways of working with the mind and learning about ways that I'm communicating with myself and my outside world and how that's creating my reality and how to get more empowered. And then I saw people release years of anger and sadness and PTSD and traumas within minutes with some of these techniques. And I was completely taken aback. And I was like, oh man, like one, I'm meant to be here Two, Like I've got to go deeper with this. Right. And so I kept going like right away, you know, right into master pack and learning about hypnosis and Huna and energy and all of the deep trainings and immediately bringing this to my clients because I saw like what I was experiencing inside of me and also what the people around me were experiencing. And so it took it to this new perception because I think the main difference was that, you know, we weren't cycling around in these stories. It wasn't just talk therapy and processing and kind of, you know, just saying some of the same things over and over again, sometimes in a new way, but a lot of times in the same way and just wanting that space to, you know, vent about the emotions, which is absolutely fine. And I recognize that as being the biggest difference of why NLP and some of these other techniques gets such great results with clients is because it takes you out of that story, takes you out of those patterns, those old perceptions, and really helps you change the way that you're thinking about things. So when I learned all of these things and when I learned about hypnosis and breakthrough sessions, I started bringing that work to my therapy clients specifically. And as you know, some of the the processes or the techniques, they take an extended period of time, you know, sometimes eight hours and different things like that. So it was it was challenging to navigate sometimes with some of my clients being that insurance is only allowed for, you know, 53 minutes of therapy at a time, things like that. So I was getting really creative with the way I was bringing it to my therapy clients. And I just saw the power that it was having on them. And one of my clients who, again, she had a severe panic disorder. She would have panic attacks all the time and she couldn't work. She couldn't drive. Beautiful woman. And after going through this work today, you know, she's back in her music career. She's like making great strides in the industry, like putting herself out there. And it's a complete 180 from where she was before. And all because of this work. And from there, I knew 
I knew the difference between therapy and coaching. To me, therapy is really that space where you need time to process, where you need time to kind of talk through whatever it is that you're going through and really just kind of vent, process, get some validation for the emotions that you're having. And I think that's absolutely necessary for some people. For me, coaching is really where you're ready to take action on those things and where you're ready to make a change, to fully uproot the problem, to to be willing to face it and do something about it. Where sometimes therapy can take years and years and years to see results because we're spending so much time processing. And again, different people are at different stages on their journey. For some people, that may be what they feel is best for them. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. You know, there's 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 room for therapy and there's room for coaching. And of course, in therapy, you can get great results as well. And with coaching, like when you're ready to do it and you're ready to go all in and kind of change the story, like get out of the the talking about it and just be ready to, to let it go because we can let it go like that, let go of those energies and those old emotions and those patterns and be able to see the world differently. And then take action on how we're seeing it differently towards our bigger goals. Like that is the biggest difference for me between therapy That's and coaching. beautiful. I'm just so grateful that you're here because I recorded a few months back a podcast episode just about the difference between therapy and coaching. But I, I just interviewed people, but mm-hmm. you being here that you're doing both to me it provides more clarity and it validates the content of that episode. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate mm-hmm. it. One of the differences that I've seen also is that therapy is very like looking at the past and mm-hmm. understanding the emotions and coaching because it's very action oriented. It's very future forward yeah. looking. It's like, okay, let's go there and let's take action together. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. both of them, beautiful practices, like you mentioned. Yeah. And both of them really trying to help the individual to live at their highest potential, whatever mm-hmm. that might be for every single person. It might be yeah. different. Oh my God. I love that. So yeah. good. So Sarah and I met, we met at the master NLP training, right? Master Prague. Mm-hmm. I think we met at Huna actually. We met in Huna. I'm like, did we take, because I took my master Prague, my master, NLP master Prague. It was, 2019 mm-hmm. in Ju- I think it was July. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember. You didn't take it that, that time. No, I took it right after you. I took it November <laughs> okay. 2019. Uh-huh. Okay. Awesome. Uh-huh. We didn't meet there. We met at Huna, which uh-huh. is the native ancient Hawaiian way of seeing and perceiving energy. It's basically like being able to do what we do with NLP, but with energy. So it's a very holistic approach also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a good reminder, my friend. Yeah. And I think the first time we met, I mean, we saw each other and I have always thought highly of you, but it wasn't until this past Huna in September of 2022 that we really <laughs> got closer with mm-hmm. our relationship, <laughs> which I really I'm appreciate. grateful for that. Yeah. So good. We were there for three, three and a half weeks. Three you know? and a half weeks, just together, mm-hmm. working on ourselves. Mm-hmm. I lost my glasses. There were a lot of <laughs> adventures in that <laughs> So much fun. I love it. I love it. So what is next uh, for you, my friend? So you're focused on this coaching. You're focused on mm-hmm. therapy. I know you do retreats uh, mm-hmm. with another one of your business partners. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what's next for Sarah? <laughs> yeah, so many things. So many things, right? So big goals with the therapy group as well. You know, we have about 10 therapists right now. I want to bring on 10 more amazing therapists because there's such a need within the community and with people to to have the space to to start the process of creating change in their life. So so big goals for the therapy group. And then for myself personally, there's some amazing experiences that I'm working on. So there's the retreats, like you mentioned. So we we go to Mexico once or twice a year to this magical area. That's my favorite place to go to. It's in the Nayarit called San Pancho. And we bring a group of women there who 
you know, are, are successful driven professionals and maybe living through some anxious chaos really in these kind of stuck states of feeling burnt out or overworked or disconnected from their self, their purpose, the things that are really important in life. So we like to use travel for transformation. Me and my my business partner, when I say we, is uh, her name's Alandria Martin, amazing metabolic health coach, by the way. And we, we love to have these experiences where we use travel for transformation and we change up the energy and we go to places where the energy is really powerful. There's a big energetic grid there. So you can just feel this shift just by being there. In the Nayarit where we are, it sits on a bed of quartz. So you can just feel this energy pull you in and prepare you to do some deep work. These retreats are so much different than just going on a yoga retreat because it incorporates all of the modalities of coaching into this retreat experience. So you get to to go through some of the deep work, change your perceptions, shift out of old energies, old patterns, gain some clarity on, you know, what you want to shift, who you're meant to be at this point in your life and really connect to an amazing group of women while you're traveling, while you're in this beautiful jungly ocean paradise and getting to to experience some of the just the the magic of traveling too some new cultural experiences some connection to some of the ancient wisdom the food the tacos and you know just being out out on the ocean (laughs) and that for me is is so amazing because i remember when when i hosted we hosted our first retreat in peru in 2018 And I just remember like being up in Machu Picchu after leading this beautiful meditation experience with the group and just thinking to myself like this, like this is my work right now. Like this is what I get to do. This is like so magical and so empowering and like just what I'm what I'm meant to be doing. And that's one of my biggest purposes is really helping people and, you know, women specifically in these retreats and other experiences get a connection to who they truly are and know their ability to create more purpose and impact in the world that, you know, they're living in, you know, whether it's through their career or relationships, whatever it is, just really helping them find that deeper sense of themselves and have that sense of awe and wonder and connection to the beauty of the world and who they are and how they're, how they're co-creating and creating the life that they really want to have. I love that so much, my friend. And I know you have been doing these retreats for a while and they look, I haven't had the opportunity yet to Mm -hmm. go yet, but they look amazing. And Mm -hmm. I remember when Cody and I got engaged, I was in Sayulitas, which is really close to where you do your retreats, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love it. It's an amazing energy, amazing area. I love using travel for these experiences and being able to combine, again, all of these holistic things like ancient ceremonies. We do this Temescal ceremony where it's like this sweat lodge that's built out of this adobe earth. And you go in there and you sweat it out. You connect to spirit and all of the, the elements and you chant and you just feel all of these layers being peeled back. You know, and so again, you can see yourself for who you truly are. So I absolutely love these travel experiences and being able to bring in also the yoga and the breath work and and the things that have, again, shaped me on my path, especially the travel. All of those things together is just such a magical experience for me and everyone who gets the opportunity to join. So those are super fun. And then also something else that I, I ran this group a few times last year and I'm getting ready to run the next one. But I host a a women's empowerment group experience. So it's a it's a seven day experience where I take people through. I take women through what we do in this one on one work. Right. We go through this breakthrough session experience and we get to do it in this community of empowered women. We go into the depths of, you know, what's lying under the surface. What is all the unconscious blockages? What are the things that are holding us back and and go into that world and really pull up everything that's been blocking us from from being who we're meant to be. The group is called Meant to Be. So it's really about, again, peeling back these layers and getting back to your, your true sense of self. And, and interesting enough with these, and, and you probably have this experience as well, when I do the detailed personal history portion of it, which is like the big chunky portion of these breakthrough sessions, 
It's so much different than therapy because in therapy, when I'm asking you questions, it's more the conscious mind kind of picking and choosing what it wants totally. to talk about. Yeah. You know, kind of like, okay, I feel like this today, or, you know, maybe this is where the root of it is. And, you know, the conscious mind just kind of picks and chooses where it identifies the problem is on a surface level. And these questions that we go into in the breakthrough session experience, they automatically activate the unconscious. So you're at a, a different level of consciousness. You're more in the theta brainwave state. Your brain is more open to the resources that you have and to, you know, the memories that maybe you thought were lost or repressed. And you have all of this access to information. And as I'm asking these questions, you're just like, you're flowing. You're just trusting what's coming through for you. And some people are like, well, I don't know why, you know, jelly beans are connected to my dad, but that's what's coming up. <laughs> yeah. Or they tell me like, yeah. you know, like I don't have any memories from my childhood. And then they just start spilling it all out, you know, as we're talking and they're not even aware of what's going on as we're going through this process. They're just, they're in a light trance and really being in a light trance is just this deeper meditative space where you have more access to these resources. You have more access to deeper level learnings or being able to install new learnings. So that's such a fun part of the process. And, and again, one of the, the biggest tools that feels different than therapy to me is, you know, activating that unconscious part of the brain and getting into the parts where the root cause of these emotions, these traumas, these beliefs are stuck and being able to, to fully let it go, fully uproot root it from that place at a deeper place than, than just kind of the surface level conscious identifying place. I, I love that so much. And um, I mean, I had a breakthrough session last weekend and I have one this weekend and I completely agree with you. Like the clients just are so surprised with anything and everything and even the patterns, how they don't realize that this situation is related to the root cause of the limiting beliefs that is showing mm -hmm. up in different areas of their lives. It's just the breakthrough session is a mind blowing experience. And mm -hmm. I tell everyone and I tell my clients the relationship I have with Cody and even being able to manifest Cody mm -hmm. that happened mm -hmm. after the breakthrough session in Master Prague. Mm -hmm. The career and being able to transition from corporate to entrepreneurship mm -hmm. that happened after the mega breakthrough mm -hmm. session in EMP1. Like right there, I had not made the decision before. Yeah. But it's all this work that we have been doing and all these tools, because sometimes people feel they have this limiting belief that creating change takes mm -hmm. years. Yeah. And it's like Tony Robbins says, change happens in a matter of seconds. It's just a decision. And many times it's subconscious. That's why we are obsessed with the yeah. subconscious mind work. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like getting ready to change that takes a long time. And exactly. I absolutely agree. I had the same experience, you know, when I went through Master Prac and had these huge shifts. That was when I was starting my therapy business and transferring from just being in a, a solo practice to bringing on the team. That's where I set my big goal to create the team. And so my wow. ability to do that and having all of these things come true that I put out there energetically was so huge and definitely, you know, Master Prac, the breakthrough session, like had this profound effect on me and my life and, you know, who I am today. I don't even know who I would be without these tools and these experiences <laughs> that we've had. And, you know, it's really allowed me to, to live my purpose, to feel connected to my deeper sense of self, my deeper values, have this total soul fulfillment in me and to be able to, to continue creating experiences that are really fulfilling for me and so much fun and so full of purpose and impact. And so, you know, with the, the therapy business and the retreats and then hosting this group experience, I'm always able to, to just stay open to what it is that's important to me, what it is that I resonate with, what it is that feels so fun. Fun's a big value of mine. I I'm love so it. Cool. I hear it. <laughs> yeah. All, you know, really being able to stay connected to these things and being fluid with shifts and changes and, you know, what it is that's important for me to be putting out into the world. So I feel so passionate about the the therapy group, about the retreats and definitely about this next group experience, because I think the thing that lights me up the most with my, whether it's with my one-on-one -on -one clients or in this group work is seeing the transformation in these oh, yeah. clients. Like it, it's yeah. night and day from when they start and when they're kind of 
in their stuff and in their anxiety and in this chaotic world. And even in this first session, starting to talk about some of the foundations of NLP and empowerment and mindset, you can see their wheels turning and they start to like shift even in those moments. And then we go through the detailed personal history and they have these big aha moments and like so much. And then we do the release work and it's like, you know, they can't even connect to that old sense of self. And then they're just ready to go out into the world and create what it is that they want and live empowered. And, and I think one of the other biggest things that, that they get and that I've learned is that it's not just a a one-time thing. It's not just a one and done, like you do the work once and you're done. It's a lifestyle. It's in a, it's a, something to, to be living in for the rest of your life, staying in this empowered mindset and being willing to, to show up to you, to do the work and to, to keep connecting to those deeper level values. However, they I might couldn't be agree life. more. It's like an everyday decision to mm-hmm. show up this way. Mm-hmm. I love that you said it's not a one-time thing. It's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. So, mm-hmm. and that's how we create sustainable change for change to for change to be sustained it's something that you gotta practice every single day that's the total truth right so yeah the ups and downs will be there but now we have the tools to Mm -hmm. ride the waves the tools Mm -hmm. the skills to ride the waves and celebrate them too (laughs) and celebrate them and have fun because hey you have fun in the waves i did in hawaii and you did too so i remember (laughs) When the first training concluded, we were just in the ocean at night, <laughs> just singing, singing. And celebrating, <laughs> and it mm-hmm. was just such a good time. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so for freaking <laughs> grateful you have shared this beautiful moment with all of us. As we conclude, and um, before I ask you, hey, where can, can our audience find you? Mm-hmm. I have rapid fire question for you to make it some fun (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I know you're all about fun my friend yes are you ready I'm ready okay cool what's your favorite book my favorite book is called peace is every step by Thich Nhat Hanh oh I love Thich Nhat Hanh Mm -hmm. who is your biggest role model Ooh, my biggest role model. That is so huge. But I, I would say my mom and my dad. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. I love it. Mm-hmm. What is the lesson that you're working on right now? What is Ooh. the lesson you're integrating right now? Oh, I love that. I love that. I was just talking about this. Um, the lesson that I'm working on right now is this ability to be grounded, to to find this space where I'm totally content in the present moment and not feeling this need to always be doing more. Because in this society, in this you know energy that we're in, there's always this like you know little voice inside my set inside my head that says, okay, you, there's there's another thing you can do or do more, do more, and it's like. No, enough is enough. And just feeling really grateful and and present in the moment and knowing that everything is perfect as it is. I love that. And I love that you were just talking about this because this question is not listed in Mm -hmm. my document. It literally, Mm -hmm. before I came here in Zoom, I'm like, I'm going to ask Zara this. So I feel we communicated energetically here. (laughs) (laughs) And honestly, that's the same lesson I'm working through is this, yeah, this like, conflicting views of the hustle versus like, hey, it's okay to rest and to just be and the world Mm -hmm. is not going to break. So mainly this week, I've also been practicing that. (laughs) That's a big one. Uh What's the most important piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Mm, To my younger self would be to know that you're enough. Right, to know that you're enough, because again, I think this energy that I'm even still working on today around like not doing enough or needing to do more has always been present for me. And so this knowing of you're enough, you're doing enough, you're good enough, like really having that at a deep core level is something that I would, I would love to tell my younger self and, you know, would have, would have made a big impact. And I think like at a, at a deeper unconscious level, I knew that. And that allowed me to move through the world as I did. And like 
being able to to tap into it even more now and share that with so many clients and the younger generations that you're enough, you're doing enough and just be present, enjoy the ride, enjoy, you know, the moments and the things that are most important to you and do your best to not get caught up in the, the energies and the waves of all the things that we think that we need to do to just be, to be in this. What a powerful message. Mm -hmm. Being is the, the bigger picture energy that leads everything else that doing and the hobby. That's amazing, yes. Sarah. Yeah. One last question that just came to mind, because why not? Mm -hmm. We're having fun here. Why not? How do you ask for guidance? So when you have an important decision and you're like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. How do you ask for guidance? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, one of the first things that I do, well, it's, it's definitely going inward. So I've learned a lot to go inwards with it and to check in with myself and to check in with some of the things that you probably tell your clients around the four requisites for change yeah. of like, Okay. Like I need to make a decision. I need some guidance. Do I have any baggage around this? Like, do I yeah. have any like big negative emotions that are out of proportion? Do I have any big beliefs and where can I do my work to clear that first? So I'm just a clear channel and I'm just totally clear. And then once I've checked in with that, I've done my release work around it. I ask myself, okay, with this, what is it that I really want? Maybe I'm, you know, needing to make a decision about something, but what is it that I really want? And then what do I need to take action on and, and stay focused on to get there. So I do those things. And the other thing that I do, which maybe is kind of funny, but I always check in with my pendulum too, which <laughs> yeah. really, you know, the pendulum is just like a, um, a way to tap into the unconscious, your intuition a little bit more, get some of that validation. So after I get my messages from me, I'm always taking my pendulum out and just checking in like, yes, is it a yes? Is it a no? I love that. I love that you mentioned the four requisites for change. I think if, yeah. if any one of my clients listen to this episode, they'll realize mm -hmm. that it's not just me who repeats this in every <laughs> yeah. step. The four requisites for change. Mm -hmm. um, I love that so much. Lately, I've been reading also The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Have you read that book? I'm reading it, actually. Like oh, my God. I love mm -hmm. it. And he talks about prayer therapy, not mm -hmm. in a religious way, but it's basically just like, hey, infinite intelligence within myself, please mm -hmm. guide me towards the right answer. I mean, just as simple as that. And that's something I've been practicing more and more, just asking for guidance, just mm -hmm. as it is to my subconscious mind that knows everything. Even the collective mm -hmm. consciousness is there, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. And I just see a lot of signs in numbers too. So I don't oh. know if that happens. Do you see a lot of always numbers? triple numbers and always, you know, reading the signs or seeing hawks yeah. or whatever it is and being able to tune into what do these things mean to me? And what's the lesson? What's the message that I meant to get? And, you know, I, I think that. another big part around making decisions is making sure I'm really grounded. Totally. And so being out in nature, if I have a big decision or if I'm feeling a lot of like this way, that way, it's like, okay, I need to take a break from all of this. I need to connect with nature. I need to get into that earth element energy. So I feel really grounded in my foundation. And then I get more clarity from there, just being able to open up that unconscious realm where, like you said, all of our resources, all of that, you know, collective consciousness, like all of the answers are there. We're just clouded by all of this anxious energy or all of this old stuff. And so we really, again, going through the four requisites, getting out into nature. I love to journal. So, you know, always kind of writing through my thoughts a little bit. And that helps me to gain the the biggest level of clarity that I need. And it's all within me. It's all within Beautiful. me. Beautiful. That's such a good reminder. It's all within us. We are whole already. We have all the answers inside. Yeah. Beautiful. Sara, thank you so much for being here. How can our audience find you? Is it Instagram, your website? Tell us more about it. Both, both. So Instagram and website are the same. So Instagram is at Sarah Ashley Coaching. And it's Sarah without an H. It's a big thing for Sarah's. And I'll put and then, on the notes too. So yeah. And then my website is also Sarah Ashley Coaching. So either of those two places will give you more information, resources, ways to connect with me. If you just want to say hi, if you're curious about anything that I've said, definitely those places are the best way to, to connect. Amazing. Thank you so much for adding so much value in today's podcast episode. To all of our audience, 
if this episode helped you, please share that with your families, your, your friends. Let's continue creating a more empowered community by sharing this knowledge and all this actionable content that we have talked about today. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening at With Clarity and Purpose. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Sharing is caring. Please share with your friends and family so we can continue building an empowered community together. I'll see you next week.